What's up guys, it's Shaky Bay. So we're gonna be dropping an entire gear guide for 2023. Now listen, this game is changing all the time. So what I recommend is that you guys actually sit through the full video and understand what I'm telling you guys. So I'm gonna be giving you guys all my knowledge on gearing, how to build your stats and everything like that. If this game does change and there's new items added, you guys can actually still look at this guide and understand what to build in the future, if that makes any sense. In general though, I am going to have timestamps throughout the entire video for you to skip around, but I don't recommend that. It's kind of good that if you're a new player or even a veteran player, I do have some stuff to offer. You'll learn if you're both new and old player. But yeah guys, if you just want to learn just good PvP content in general, this is the channel to follow. I PvP all the time. But in general, on what we're going to be discussing, this gear guide is going to be about understanding what gear you want to go for and what secondary builds you're going to need. Your, your class archetypes, and what I mean by that is what classes are going to be specializing in DR, evasion, AP human damage, which classes are accuracy stars. We'll go over um, what you're going to want for PvE. We'll go over how to obtain some gear for new players because there's a lot of new players coming into the game. So what I mean by that is, I'm going to tell you about all the free handouts that are giving to the game. And that would be things like Seasons, Journals, Infinite HP Pot, Jetna Free Pen Accessory, Jetna Armors, the Magnus Pen Armor, the free Garmoth Heart Quest Line. We'll talk about how to buff correctly because buffing is going to be factored into your build. The reason why it's so important is because it's literally giving you stats equivalent to having extra gear items. If you're not buffing, you're just not being optimal, so it's very important I go over that. After you guys understand all of that... I think then it'll be appropriate to, to start talking about things like crystals, your artifacts and lightstone combos. We'll talk about the best in slot items and why. And then in, the, in that section, I'll talk about the meta there. We'll talk about the early game builds, so what you're going to be wanting to go for when you're early and new and fresh into the game. Then we'll talk about the soft cap build and then the intro to hard cap build and then the hard cap build and what's going to be what. What I want to go over first is the fact that no build is the best build right now. This is where class discords have been like misinforming the game for a very, very, very long time. They try to tell new players that just go for this or go for that. But the reality is, is that if you actually PvP in this game and you go to Arsha or if you fight other guilds that have some reasonable gear, what you're going to find happening is that almost everyone is going to have multiple builds on you. Especially if they're like an evasion class or... If they're a Valkyrie or like any sort of tanky class, you're going to find people having multiple builds. And for this reason, you're going to benefit to having this multiple build. There's a concept of countering in this game. The watered down version of it is that evasion is going to be, is going to eat up AP and human damage, right? It's going to be the counter to that. The reason why it's a counter is because in most cases, not all cases, the person who builds AP and human damage is sacrificing their accuracy just to build AP stats and they're also sacrificing their defensive stats. A lot of the times, these guys have no evasion, no DR, and they're low on accuracy. By that logic, you're able to wear evasion, more defensive stats, and you can still one combo them with lower AP because they have lower defensive stats. This has especially become true because of the fact that of the class reboots, everyone is doing more damage currently. Typically, this will be the counter. Now, if someone is going to be above 720 gear score, this is going to change. Almost everybody has accuracy. But we'll talk more about this later on in the video. The second concept would be accuracy is going to eat up evasion. So accuracy is going to improve your hit rate against evasion targets. It's pretty standard. That's your counter to evade. DR slash HP, right, is going to counter accuracy. Now this is only going to be true up to a certain extent of gear. What you're trying to do here is you're trying to AP check. You're trying to AP check them for dropping lots of brackets. Sometimes, let's say you're running like 1400 evasion, that guy might just wear like 3 or 4 accuracy items, he's dropping his AP brackets, you're just going to have to wear DR slash HP and see if you can survive. Can't, then you just can't. Go full AP and fight the guy, right? AP slash human damage is going to be better than DR because you're just eating up their low defensive stats, they have no evasion. You just you're just trying to overwhelm the fact that they don't have a proper defensive stat. Typically because if someone can stack a lot of evasion, evasion ends up being the tankier defensive stat versus DR. But not in all cases, it actually depends on what class you are. 
Now for our next topic, we are going to be discussing which classes like evasion, DR, AP human damage, and what classes are accuracy star. This is going to help you understand what kind of build you want to build for your main build, okay? Now I'm going to display a chart here, but there's a very, very, very big disclaimer, okay? I'm going to explain some of the things, why they are, why they are, okay? The second thing, this, and get this in your head, please. The graphic I am about to show is not relevant to whether you're going to build Bag, Lieber, or Muskin Uragons. And it is not relevant to if you're going to build Green Dawn or Blue Dawn Gloves, okay? I'm just showing you which classes have which archetypes. This is not relevant to the gearing meta. I'm trying to help you understand your classes, okay? As I said, this graphic is just there to help you understand what archetype your class is, okay? Now for the classes in yellow, whether they can go evasion or DR, I'll explain their passives so you can kind of pick it on your own. Sorceress has an evasion active skill. Ranger can go evasion because of their offhand being plus 123 evasion. Musa and Mewa can both have an evasion pass. However, they both benefit from getting a lot of accuracy. Wizard and Witch both have the parrying dagger offhand, which gives them plus 123 evasion. So they can go either or. However, in the current meta, they like to favor going human damage DR, but I'm going to help you solve this problem later on in the builds. Ninja and Kuno are just like Musa Mewa, except for the fact they also have evasion actives and they can kind of go either or. They both benefit from getting a lot of damage. Like I said, we'll solve this later on. Lon has a evasion active skill, so they can kind of go either or. I recommend Lons to more go the hybrid route, which I'll explain later. Archer is the big one a lot of the community will be confused about. Now, the reason why I'm saying this, and because swaps are so prevalent today, is because Archer actually has access to a plus 123 evasion offhand. And with today's meta, with all the new crystals, the new stats, the new armors in the game, because you can get more evasion, Archer can now actually consider running evasion as an off build when they need it. So what I'm going to be recommending for archers in the future is that they get blue dawn gloves and muskins. They run their typical human damage AP DR build because it's just not going to matter whether they have uragons or muskins on. But when they need to, they can actually think about running evasion now. So that's something pretty interesting that a lot of archers may not know or may not have considered, but it is definitely a viable route. But like I said, you're going to be maining your human damage AP build as an archer. Hashashin has a, a evasion active. They can go either or. It's really up to them. Wusa can also go either or. Their stats just kind of blow, but they do kind of pretty good with evasion. It's actually not too bad. Now for the evasion section, the only classes that should really consider going full evasion would be Striker, Mystic, Corsair, and Sage. Even these days though, with the current meta, they're considering building some accuracy which I'll get into later. Now we're going to talk about the accuracy starved classes. Pretty much all those classes are accuracy starved except for Ranger and Berserker. Those two classes can actually just build whatever. However, for some reason, when those two classes build accuracy, they just kind of go off and it's kind of Omega low broken. You know, I recommend getting accuracy in those two classes. Okay. Outside of that, uh, this list is pretty much accurate and should help you explain what you kind of want to go for. Now the next question that's going to be pondering a lot of your minds, well, hey, I'm a PvE player. What do I build? Like, I want to build PvE. That's what I want to focus on. And what, what, what stats are better? Generally, evasion is going to be the better defensive stat in PvE in most of the grind spots. Your secondary stat needed would be accuracy, so you have enough hit rate to hit the mobs. These days, though, however, especially with the new crystal system that, that's been input into the game, and with the amount of bonus stats we're being given from journals, quest lines, the Black Star items, right? All the new Fallen God items. Generally, I would not worry about whether you are DR or Evasion, especially in PvE. Once you max out your gear, whether you're DR or Evasion, it literally doesn't matter. So if you build for PvE in terms of defensive stat, you're actually inting yourself because BDO, it's an open world game. And people are going to gank you. So don't make yourself the prey in this game is what I like to say. You need to be ready. What I pretty much said in the last segment is what you kind of want to focus on. Don't worry about PvE 
in terms of your defensive stat. Now in terms of accuracy, wherever you're grinding for your AP and with the current new crystal items I'm going to be giving you guys, you guys are also most likely going to have enough accuracy for wherever you're grinding. The only spots where you have to worry about inputting a little bit more accuracy into your build would be Crypt, Olens, Quint Hill, Ash Forest, Hex Sanctuary, and Bloody Monastery. And for those spots, you would just input a little bit more crystals for accuracy. In terms of Crypt, where you need a lot of accuracy, you will actually be running a certain build, or you may be grinding with a certain class in that area. As I said for the rest, I wouldn't worry about it. Don't worry too much about your accuracy or evasion. You also have Garmoth.com at your disposal, so you can kind of see what your rates are. But in general, I wouldn't worry too much about that stat in PvE. You should be fine. Most likely you're going to have the stats needed to grind in your gear score pool. What is more important is that you build for PvP so you don't get bullied in grind spots by other players. Most PvE grind spots are also damage capped, so building strictly for PvE will pit you at a major disadvantage through the majority of this game especially because you will most likely hit the caps anyways in most of the grind spots so i wouldn't worry too much about it in terms of worrying about monster damage this is what you will worry about you'll have a crystal build specifically to have more monster damage or more ap to hit the ap caps this is also going to be superseded by the fact that you guys at the beginning and mid game of the game are going to need black star weapons and god eye weapons Basically, Black Star weapons are weapons that when you hit them depend, they become equivalent to a C20 Zarka, but with more monster damage. Then give it like a Kudum, but your main hand, right? Or your Awakening slot. Or your, even your offhand slot. Typically, you want to go for your main hand and your awake. The offhand black star is not really worth getting. It's just not worth it. It's for very minimal monster damage. Worry more so about your awakening and your main hand. Now, the stat you will worry about in PvE, which is going to be just accepted by crystals. You're just going to have a crystal build for this, and it's going to be pretty cheap. Now, the stat that you will worry about in PvE is monster damage, and you're going to get this by a few items. You're going to get it through your... Black Star Weapon, so your main hand and your Awakening, and you're going to get your Crystals through this. And that's how you're going to hit the caps. Now, when you hit about 710 to 720 gear score, I would start calculating whether you even need Black Stars or God Eye Weapons. Basically, what's happening is, with all the new Crystals in the game, people are able to hit the Monster Damage Caps without Black Stars. So they're selling their Black Stars, getting a bit of extra Silver Flow, they're c 20 their Zarkas now, or their Dandelions now. For your early game to mid game, Black Stars absolutely recommended towards 720 to 730 gear score where you're getting towards the end game of BDO, you might consider selling them. Just keep this in the back of your mind. Absolutely go for Black Star and God Eye early game. Don't go for Zarka. You want the monster damage. It's going to help you grind a lot more silver and it's necessary. Definitely go for those monster damage weapons in the beginning and use the crystals. That's it. Other than that, you're not going to be focusing on too much. Alright guys, so now this is going to be the section I'm going to be talking about all of your free handouts as a new player. They have added quite a bit to the game for you to catch up. Once upon a time, it took us a whole year to get to soft cap gear. Now guess what? Now they've added this thing called Season Servers, where they allow you to get full pen on a weaker gear set. This gear set, when you hit full pen, is exactly equal to full tet boss. That's really what it is. So, I would definitely start up as a new player on Season Servers. It's going to give you a massive boost into the game. I'm not going to give you a full guide on Season Servers, otherwise this video would be like 5 hours long. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to give you guys this website to go to. Video Foundry actually has an excellent resource for new players to read up on, and you'll know everything about about season so what I would do give this a full read and then you guys are gonna be set and you guys are gonna know how to progress in season servers and you guys are Gucci so the first thing step one is season servers your next step will be to do your journals and miniature quest line that give you stats Basically, the reason why you want to do your journal is it gives you a boatload of stats. You're gonna get weight limit, stamina, health points, accuracy, inventory slots in some cases you're gonna get DP like sheet DP. You're going to get evasion, AP, damage reduction. You guys need to do all of this. This is your mandatory thing to do as soon as you're done getting full pen on seasons. Please, guys, start your journals. What I recommend, save up all your silver as much as possible. And then when you're done with seasons, go straight to doing journals. This is a must. You have to do it. You're going to get a lot of AP and DP. 
So the way you guys are going to want to do this, I'm going to list them on the screen for you, every single one. And then what you're going to want to do, I'm not joking, Google them. They're too long. They're just too long. Listen, like I said, unless you want this video to be five hours long, listen, this is the list right here. Google this. Google each one. You're going to have to get all of them, okay? And this is going to give you a lot of sheet AP and DP and stats. This is very important. You cannot skip this. I'm telling you. This is actually a big thing in this game. Like, if I, as a veteran player, go on seasons, it's actually unfair. Because not only do I have journals on top of you, but I have crystals on top of you. So guys, please, do this. It's very important. Alright, now the next thing that I want to get you guys is going to be the pen accessory quest line that you can do with Jetna. Basically, it's a daily kill count quest that you do every day for 45 days straight. And you're going to get a free pen accessory. It's going to cost you about 8.7 bill. Normally, it's going to cost you, you know, 50 bill just to make it or buy it. It could even cost you more if you fail more. But 8.7 bill for a pen accessory, it's a good deal. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go ahead and link the guide on how to start this quest line. I'll put it in the description. It'll be under the important link section of the description. So go look in the YouTube description. All the links will be there. For you to get started now the next thing i'd focus on is jetna's guaranteed pen boss gear so this is an optional thing okay now what i will say is this if you just want the easy simple route the brain dead route honestly just grind silver and buy your pen boss gear pretty simple nowadays okay if you want a a faster way like if you're a hardcore player and you want a faster way and a more cost effective way to upgrade your boss gear i recommend doing the jetna guaranteed pen boss gear basically there's what you're gonna end up what you're gonna end up doing is that you're gonna end up doing some rifts, some bossing in open world, you're gonna get all those materials, you're gonna funnel them in, and then it's gonna get you your materials to guarantee your boss gear to pen. And it ends up being a lot cheaper. So that's also another thing where it's gonna make this guide five hours. So I'm just gonna drop a link in the description for you guys to read up on it so you guys know what to do. Your next thing would be the Magnus Pen Armor qu quest. And this is going to be a trending meme at this point, but guess what I'm going to tell you guys? Google it. <laughs> listen, not, listen, everything in this game you're going to realize is a nightmare, and you're going to need to have like a written out guide for some of the stuff if you're brand new. Otherwise, you'd just be watching a three-hour, five-hour video, okay? Basically, the Magnus Quest is this thing that lets you connect all of your storages across the game, and then you can access any storage from anywhere is what it, is what it does. And as a reward for doing that quest line, you can also unlock fast travel through jumping in some wells. And then uh, it, they give you a free pen armor box you can choose from as well. So This quest line is honestly a nightmare. It's the most buggiest shit you're ever going to see. Uh, I would not judge the game based off of this being buggy though. I would just, you know, get, get through that nightmare of a quest line and then forget about it. Pretend like it never happened. Essentially after that, you've done all the free handouts. You could do one more thing, which is the free Garmoth Heart Quest line. A lot of people tend to avoid doing it, but I would recommend you do it. I'll also throw that in the description. After that, those are pretty much all of your free handouts. Now guys, I want to talk about buffing because buffing is very much factored into your build. It, it affects your stat sheet heavily. What I will say is this, okay? There's a lot of people in this game that don't do this and they're lazy, but I want to influence the new generation of players to do the right thing. You should be buffed 24-7. If you're not buffed 24-7 and someone ganks you, don't sit there and complain buffs. You could have got the buffs. Listen, guys, make a habit early on that you're buffed 24-7. Your buffs are worth spending money into, okay? Think of it as an investment to be stronger to do more damage and be more efficient at grinding and to better yourself in PvP, okay? It's very much important for your build. So what I will go over first is the standard PvE build. Now the orange buff is you're gonna be with the sword icon with the up arrows is gonna be your villa buff. You can get this by going to a villa in game that's in Valencia. On the map, they show up as blue pillars. You go to them, you talk to the NPC, you rent a contract that lasts a week and then you can buff up for four hours. Then you can pull out your tent and buff yourself. Now, if you have a Supreme Book of Old Moon, the pay to win thing from the cash shop that lasts 15 days, or if you have a tent, you don't have to do this. You can just pull out your tent, talk to it, and grab the buff. It's a convenience thing, really. The next row with the little food looking thing, that's gonna be your food buffs, okay? In general, if you need EXP, use simple cron meal. If you need to be more efficient at doing damage, use Exquisite Cron Meal, okay? If you need to meet monster damage caps, use Simple Cron Meal, because it's going to give you more 
um, it's going to give you more monster damage to hit those caps. The next thing is the MP giveaway thing. Every hit you do will give you MP back. Typically, you pair it up with the Frenzy Draft, the purple draft, to maximize your crit. Or alternatively, if you don't need it, you can just get um, a, a critical hit elixir. However, I would use this because you can get an extra 5 monster damage with the embracing version of it. The next row would be your draft. There's three drafts you're going to be using. The Frenzy Draft, the Giant Draft, and the blue one at the bottom, which gives human damage. Basically, you use Frenzy Draft if you, need to, if you need to sustain HP a play. So if a spot is doing too much damage to you and you have to sustain, use Frenzy Draft because it's going to give you plus 3 HP per hit. I recommend using it. Next thing would be your Giant Draft. Giant Draft is just a full-on stat boost. If you don't need to maintain, Giant Draft is best in a slot. If you're in a spot that is a human damage area, like a, it's a human type mob, Use the blue elixir always. The next three icons are your church buffs. Go to any church in any major city, and then you can get a church buff, which is this AP, DR, and EXP. Pretty simple. The next thing would be your furniture buff. I recommend using the plus 15 AP for three hours, one every grind spot. These drop from world bosses, or you can buy them off the, off the auction house. Pretty simple. There's one last buff I need to talk about that isn't mentioned. It is a Caroline buff. Basically, go to Heidel, look for Caroline, talk to her, do a mini Amity game, and then you can get a critical hit damage buff for 30 minutes. So every time you leave town, just grab Caroline, and then you just don't have it for two hours. It's not worth kind of running back and forth for, but... Um, whenever you leave town, just grab Caroline just so you have it. It's a nice little boost. And always grab it for Node Wars too. But that's your basic buffing right there. Alright guys, now we're going to be talking about crystals. I would pay a lot of attention here. I'm going to try to break it down for you. Crystals can become a very complicated subject to look at, especially for a new player. Now for us veterans, there was a time where the crystals were actually binded to the armor slots. They have now removed that limitation. So if you're like a new player coming into this, the crystals can seem super confusing, I can imagine. But for us new players, we've been dealing with crystals and us kind of thinking in that way of looking at it, like, oh, this is like the Awakened Garmoth slot or this is that slot. For us, we can kind of break it down for you guys. So let's just try to follow along and I'll try to make it simple for you guys. The first thing I will do is give you guys a standard crystal build for the early game. Now, with this picture I'm going to be showing you guys, whatever I have highlighted in green are extra crystal slots. You will not have access to them right now. But this is going to be your early game crystal build, a mid-level crystal build that you guys are going to want for PvE. Here is the crystal build. So, everything circled in green, don't worry about it. Those four slots I have highlighted, you unlock them by doing your Garmoth heart. If you get the Garmoth heart and drop it, you put it in your awakening weapon, and then you unlock two slots. If you complete your Land of Morning Light quest line, you then unlock another two slots, giving you four extra crystal slots that are obtainable. The crystal in the center is going to be your costume slot crystal, which is like a really minimal stat, like plus three crit hit or plus three move speed. You don't have to worry too much about it, okay? This is going to give you a lot of AP to monsters, and it should help you in the early game for grinding. Alright, now this is going to be your end game crystals, and I'm going to explain this really quick, okay? So whatever I have highlighted in green is, again, those extra crystal slots I was talking about. Whatever I have highlighted in blue are crystals that you can swap out for other crystals that you might use in end game grind spots for certain reasons. I'm going to give you a list of those crystals right now. I just thought I would go ahead and explain that for you guys really quick. So these new crystals are actually really OP. The one on the bottom left, the Garen's Tear, this crystal is going to be staple for all PvE builds. I mean, it gives you drop rate. Why the hell wouldn't you use that? You know what I'm saying? The rest, I have it min-max to how much, you know, how much monster damage and AP you're going to be getting. So whatever I have highlighted in blue are crystals that you can replace for other meta crystals that might be better in certain grind spots. But by the time you hit end game, you guys are going to have a full understanding of the game. Hey, do I need back attack damage here? Do I want more damage? Do I want down attack? Do I want crit? You're going to understand all this by the time you hit this level anyways. So you guys are going to understand that no matter what. Now I'm going to show you what crystals you can replace the highlighted blue ones for that you might consider. 
All right, now for crystals, you might swap out and use depending on your grind spot, right? So for the top left, where you see the resplendent kydic crystal and the kydic crystal for the adventure, you can actually swap as many of those as you want for extra EXP. So if your goal is to just get EXP, you can pop an infinite amount of those in your build if you want. Now for the rest of the swappable slots, you can consider using the ultimate combined magic crystal of Maclod for the set bonus. You can get a bit of extra AP, some combat EXP, some stamina, and some accuracy. It could be useful in certain areas. Now on the bottom left where you see the Bong Wong's tier, you could either uh, swap your current legendary for that or you can use this. It's really up to you. In the middle where we see the Ensnare or the Magic Crystal of Infinity Ensnare, you can use that if you need to pop accuracy. Might be useful at Crypt. The Gervish set, you can use that if you're grinding a low end area and you already one shot the mobs. The extra weight limit can kind of come in clutch to be honest. Now the top one where you see the Crystal of Mysterious Darkness, this is going to replace your current Corrupted. And this is going to help you do more back attack damage because you can get 24% with that. Plus you can get a little bit extra with the other crystals we have in the main build. Outside of that, if you are hitting the AP cap, you can take off a Power Crystal and you can input another all you kiss to get, you know, more uh, more attack speed. Um, and of course, if you are like you don't need those other stats that are in there, you can just put in more power to supersede the cap. The bottom right, where you see all the RBF crystals, you can pop that in human damage areas such as Bloody Monastery or Abandoned Monastery. Any spot that has human damage, you can pop those in and get even more damage. It's actually really OP in those spots. But those are just about all the swaps I could think of that you might need in PvE. Alright, now we're going to get into the PvP crystals. So just like the last section, the green circle are going to be things that are extra slots you have to unlock later on. So you don't have to worry about those slots until you can actually get something tangible, if you guys know what I'm saying, right? The red slots. Red slots are crystals that must absolutely stay. They must absolutely stay no matter what. They're just staples. You have to have them in the build. They just can't be swapped out. Every every class. The rest of the build. You're going to notice that there's no Corrupteds in this or no quote-unquote offhand crystals. The reason for that is because the new crystals are just broken stat for stat and you might as well abuse them. Your main build, even if you are DR or evasion, what's happening is, is that everyone is popping these crystals. I'll explain. Basically, the blue crystals on the on the top right and the bottom right are giving you DR and evasion in one crystal. So it's becoming a best in slot crystal for everybody. The new hooms are just busted stat for stat. They give you accuracy, HP, and evasion, so you might as well use them. So if everyone's going to be popping those, your next best stat guesses is to just go with Jin Vipers, because everyone needs Jin Vipers for the accuracy. And then your last option would be quote unquote the Helmet Crystals. So this is where you're going to have to do a little bit of give or take. Either you're going to pop two Corrupted here, or you're going to use two Jin, two Jin uh, Harpias if you're like me, right? If you're like someone like me who's going to be abusing evasion or tanking a stat, you're going to pop two Jin Harpias for evasion. You are someone like human damage DR you're trying to focus on slaying people down you're gonna pop corrupted somewhere in this build whatever is not highlighted are crystals you can change around and interchange and I'm gonna show you guys instances of other builds that work really well they're not gonna be builds that um focus too much on uh like other meta crystals there's definitely crystal builds in the game so I'm gonna go ahead and just show you them all right, guys, so for example, on the topic of crystal build, right? So this, I have some presets here. Now, if you look right here where my mouse cursor is, where it says 1150 evasion, 1143, let's say I'm fighting a dude and, like, you know, I just want to be a little bit tankier. I'll pop this crystal build on. See, my evasion went up by, like, 37, right? That's just by adding in those swappable slots I was talking to you guys earlier. Let's say I'm fighting someone who I'm having a super hard time hitting. Well, I have an accuracy one. Look at this. I swapped all the swappables for accuracy. Now my accuracy is at 1,009 with the Kudum. Like, this is the importance of crystal builds here. Like, now I'm at 1,092. And look, I can make this even worse with the light stones we'll talk about later, right? I can make it even worse. I can go two grounds, right? And then I can go two marks. This, this will make it even worse for him, right? Let's say that guy popping hella evasion on me. And we're going to pop melee accuracy, melee accuracy. Look at my accuracy now. 1146 accuracy. 
So this is the importance of like understanding your swaps on your crystal builds. Not just one crystal build is gonna help. On the topic is for some certain class specifics, right? So what you guys can end up doing is, let's say you're a ninja and like you need to have grapple resistance or grapple penetration, you can just run uh, two of these, two grapple ignores. I know a lot of ninjas that run grapple ignore. Now, if you're me and you want to be an asshole, see, I'm a Musa main, right? I don't like getting grabbed. So I'll actually use um, these bad boys right here. It's the sturdiness, the grapple resists, right? I'll actually do stuff like this to people on 1v1s. I don't care. This is what I mean. I'm trying to open your guys' mind to understanding how you can adjust these crystal builds to adapt your situations plus there's presets in game you can set all this you could even run resistance like if you want to run resistance you can run two adamandines right boom now your resistance is like i was like through the roof you can change so much stuff so what i'm what i'm telling you guys here here is that there's not a best crystal build you're gonna have your main build for like open world pvp and then you're gonna want to start adjusting a lot of this stuff on come to garmod.com look at the crystals and start playing around with it. You can follow my rubric I gave you guys earlier with like what's swappable, what's not, but you can definitely get the job done. I mean, like I said, like for me, all the bills I need is I have my PVE ones, I have my human damage set if I need it, like if I wanna blow someone up, I have this right here. All Macalods, this, right? I wanna do like big boy damage, I'll pop on a Noover, you know what I'm saying? And then if I wanna go even more into it, I'll do two melee accuracy, I'll do an iridescent and then I'll just do like a bunch of these right here which I'll talk about in a second in the next segment all the light stones but this build will just give me like I want to nuke you kind of vibes you know what I'm saying this is the build where I'm inting into you just to blow up to blow myself up and do a bunch of damage too like you can see all the AP here that's like extra it's insane and this is what the crystal build offers so me showing you this is the reason why I'm not explaining the builds directly is because I would be doing you an injustice. Every class is different, and at this point, I've explained to you guys what class is what demographic, what archetype it is. So, it's up to you guys to make the builds and make your class work and make it shine. If I were to just tell you what to do, I'm doing an injustice. You're not going to understand the game. So, I'm just showing you this so you guys understand what can be done and what you can do. So... If you use the countering concept, you can make a bunch of builds, like a bunch, and they're all going to be viable. All right, guys, now for the light stones and artifacts section, I have all of them listed out for you guys. And when you guys are building your artifact set and using your light stone combinations, make sure it, it actually, you know, complements your crystal build. For example, if you're running like accuracy artifacts, you might want to run that with accuracy crystals to like supersede the effect. Think of, think of artifacts like an extension of your crystal build. It's, like, it's just some extra stats you can put up. As far as the artifacts you need, the actual gear slot, you want your accuracy type. So whether you're melee, magic, or ranged, you want a few sets of those. You want a few sets of all evasion. Um, melee, magic, and ranged evasion, you're going to want that too for your one of you ones. The same thing goes for damage reduction if you need it. If you're a DR class, get a few sets of those. Then I would get... Um, a set of monster damage artifacts for PVE, and I would also look at getting, and I would also look at getting um, all AP for like human damage areas if you're gonna need, if you're gonna need that. That is. All right, guys. Now, as for your lightstone combinations, these are pretty much all the combinations you're ever gonna use. These are all the meta ones. I will talk about one, um, the one that's called Mind Focus on the right side. Um, this one right here, right? This one it gives 900 MP. You're probably like, what am I using this for? Using it against suck Mayweather because they like to mana zap you and they like to use that broken mechanic. Um, but as soon as you wear this mind focus thing, nine times out of ten, they don't know how to play the class. So they're probably like, what's going on? <laughs> Why is he not getting mana zapped? And then they realize that you probably have the artifact on and they're probably like, uh, uh, and then they just die. So have fun with that artifact, guys. Other than that, this artifact set should, um, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. Make sure you combine these with the proper crystal set and you guys are going to get good results. Right guys, so like I said, when you guys come into the game, uh, you're going to be doing your seasonal. So focus on getting your full seasonal done and this is what you're going to want to go for here. Every class in the game in seasonal will go for this. Every single one. Get your journals done, get this all out of the way. 
Get your get some of your artifacts. Early game blur is actually pretty good, or you can use all accuracy or even all blight, like one like three blight and one iridescent, pretty strong. And then just you know, crystal build can be pretty standard. You can run just like the budget PvE build, which is this one that I showed you guys earlier. Or you can use your PvP build without the Garmoth slots. That's what you're gonna have pretty much. Alright, once you guys get into your once you guys get done with your seasonal and you've hit all that gear, you now have to decide whether you're gonna go blue gloves or muskins, green gloves or uragons, or you're gonna go green gloves and muskins. These are all the viable builds. At the top of the screen, I have listed for you the difference between green dawn and uragon versus blue dawn and muskins. With Green Dawn and Uragon, you're going to get 13 Evasion, 22 DR, negative 25 Accuracy compared to the Blue Dawns. And you're going to get an extra 4 DP. With the Blue Dawn and Muskin setup, you're going to get 13 Evasion, 22 DR, and 25 Accuracy. With the Green Dawn and Muskin setup, you're going to get 25 less Accuracy, but you're going to get way more Evasion. And you're going to get, you know, two plus 2 more DP, okay? As you guys can see in the list, I have literally said every class should go Blue Dawn and, and Muskins right now. That goes for the Human Damage DR classes too. The reason for that is because with all the new crystals in the game, almost everyone now can get 1100 no, evasion which, by just wearing a Kudum in the game. It's broken. Nice. Evasion is insane right now. Yeah, everyone is doing it at this point. And at this point, if, if you're running like... If you're running bag Aragons, you're, you're just, you're kind of throwing. You're just, you're throwing. I'll make fun of you even. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Consider these builds right now, okay? Now, under the green gloves and Aragons, right? The classes that can consider this. This is Evasion Gloves and DR Boots. Now, now the first class would be Berserker. Now, Berserkers can consider this build. However, I strongly believe they are better off with the blue gloves because, like I said, when that class gets accuracy, it's kind of disgusting. Valkyrie, Guardian, Suck Nova, Draconia should absolutely consider this build. This build is going to make them extremely tanky, and those classes already have a good amount of accuracy anyways. Warrior is a class that can consider this, but just like Berserker, and because of the fact that Warrior is accuracy starved, I recommend they go with the blue gloves and musket. On the right side... There's going to be some new tech for some of you. Probably don't know about this. Now, the helmet slot. This is a, something you guys can, can consider. If you consider a C19 Xerath helmet versus a Duo Labresca helmet, right? The difference is, is you're going to get less HP, less DR, but you actually get 26 more evasion and you get 10% more KD bound resistance, which is the better resistance compared to what Labresca can give you, and that's that duo, which is pretty interesting, right? The helmet thing is really up to you. I just put that there. That's really up to you guys to decide. If you're someone who's going to be abusing the living hell out of evasion, you should probably run that Panzerath helmet. So our shy main should probably be using that unless they just have like a a Tet fall, a, like a Tet Labresca helmet or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But early on, the Panzerath helmet is actually really good, and a lot of people don't know about that helmet being a thing. Sakuno can, can, can consider going full evasion because they already have a lot of accuracy. They don't really need the blue gloves, you know what I'm saying? Mystic and Striker can love abusing evasion, you might as well use it. I do know a few Mystic and Strikers that are considering going with the blue gloves and muskins now, which is why I literally put every class in the game can run it. Again, it's up to you guys. Shy, Sage, Corsair, and Megu can all abuse the evasion builds as well. In general though, um, getting a lot of evasion isn't hard anymore. So I, I just personally, I strongly believe that everyone should go blue gloves and muskins. Unless you're one of those shield classes that can eat well with the Uragon and green glove setup. I really think everyone should go blue gloves and muskins right now. But um, if you're an evasion class and you like the idea of I want to be tanky as as hell, then I think the green gloves and muskins is for you. When you guys hit this gear level, this is when you want to get into swaps. And I'm going to explain the swaps to everyone right now. But before then, I want to show you guys what this gear looks like across all classes. Same buffs, same crystals with the same archetype, right? This is Archer, right? That wrecks the maneuver. Now, when you need to be tankier, look. You almost have 1100 evasion, you're not even C20. This was broken. This was never before seen in the game. 
Now an archer can do this with just a kudum. Imagine if you are like, if you're a plus 123 evasion off and then you wore your centaur belt. Now it's actually somewhat kind of viable. You can actually use this to counter gearlets, right? And then it's like, oh, well, what if someone wears evasion? Well, get the accuracy off hand. Now you're 1057 accuracy at this gear level, which is not the best, but at this gear level, it's better than nothing. And having these swaps is going to save you a lot, right? Now to compare the difference, right? Now we can go on to Musa, who is a bit more suited for evasion. It's not that much more evasion as you can see, right? I mean, they have an evasion passive to make it a little bit more modified, but really stat for stat, it's not that much crazy, right? It's not that much of like a crazy difference. Now look, Musa was that class I can go human damage or DR. Well, in turn, I can just run the Nuver setup right here and just get more AP into the same shit as, a, as an archer. This is what I'm saying. The multiple builds is going to beat everything, okay? Now, let's go back over to Warrior, who is a DR class. Look, same build, but look, almost 1100 evasion with 484 DR. Warrior is a class that can give itself 40 D DR around there. It got nerfed since then. It used to be able to give itself around like 60 to 70 if I remember correctly, but they nerfed him. So now he's down to like 40-ish, right? This is what I'm saying about knowing your class, right? And knowing your archetype, this is going to really help you. Look, the fact that a Warrior can get almost the same evasion as a Musa, but get 500 plus DR when they buff, that's scary. Because a Musa's DR is 450. I mean, we're hitting in some tanky times right now, right? Okay, but what about the Libra Uragon setup? Look, the difference here is that you're getting a little bit less evasion, but look, 503 DR unbuffed at C13 level. Isn't that crazy? And now you want to compare this to a Striker, right? Here's Striker. <laughs> like, like the true evasion meme. This is why I was saying for like the evasion meme classes, they want to go with this build. But like if you look, Dawn is completely viable here. Accuracy is definitely going to be the problem right now in today's meta. So that's why I consider that for everybody. So on the topic of swaps, right? So that mid game gear set is when you want to start getting the swaps, right? So this is what I consider to be my personal main build on Musa. On the topic of swaps, Okay, let's say I want to be an all-in, just do more damage and blow people up. Then I would do this. I would swap my crystals, my artifacts, and my offhand, which are all very cheap things to do. Now, let's say I'm fighting someone who has a lot of evasion, and I can't combo them with my AP set. Then, I'm going to wear my accuracy offhand, change my crystals, change my artifacts, and now my accuracy is 1134. Let's say I'm fighting a guy who has no accuracy, then I'm going to be the evasion abuser. I'll first start by putting on a Sissel necklace, which could be a Tet or a Pen. It doesn't have to be Pen. We can get it at Tet. I'll just wear my evasion crystals and pop that on and see how it goes. If he's still doing a little bit of damage, we'll do more. We'll wear the offhand next. 1224 evasion. Not enough? Okay, well we'll do even more. We'll wear the centaur belt. Now we're almost at 1300 evasion. A striker could do this way better than a Musa ever could, but I'm just showing you the example. And if I wanted to be even worse, I'd just wear a Sissel necklace with that be 1310 evasion and just call it a day. And if you're still killing me, well, that's just what happens when you fight geared people. This is, you just can't get too tanky, like, or like tanky enough, that is. You know what I'm saying? So, that's the importance of swaps. All the swaps are super cheap. What you're looking at is getting a DR offhand, your Nuver, your evasion offhand, your accuracy offhand. You want to get a centaur belt swap. You want to get a Sissel necklace swap. For the DR classes, you want to get Kadri rings, Ronaros, Narc earrings, all at the Tet level and get it at around the mid game gear level. And then you can start mixing and matching gear sets when you fight people. And then you can start countering people. It actually comes in really in handy, especially when you have end game and then you have the end game stats on top of it. It can become pretty overwhelming. Now, I'm showing this from a Musa point of view. But basically, your rings, everyone needs to be building ominous rings. The reason why is because, like I said, there's too much evasion in the game. And you need to run this over the tongue added ring. It's just, it's just the best AP to accuracy ratio possible. Now, the question you're going to be asking me, hey, Shaky Bay, why didn't you recommend Lunar Turo? Now, Lunar Turo is actually pretty viable on a few classes that are accuracy star that can really, really benefit from it. But on certain classes that already have a decent amount of accuracy, it's actually not so much of a good idea, and let me show you what. Let's say I'm going to swap. I'm going to use a swap offhand, right? Let's say I want to abuse accuracy offhand. Let's say I'm an arch, right? So we'll go with the Blackhorn Warrior Bow. I have the accuracy offhand of 1,052 on. My APR now is 297. 
The problem is, is let's say, I look at my APM, it's 297, right? If I pop a Tungrad ring, or let's say I go, yeah, actually, yeah, let, let's say I'm double Tungrad ring, right? <clears throat> Let me show you what happens. So if I'm, let's say, double pen Tungrad ring, and let's say I get a Turo belt. 298, right? Right now you're probably like, well, what's the problem, right? What's the issue here? Now let's say I do this. I go with uh, Lunar. Now you're still probably saying, well, what's the problem? It's just one bracket. Here's the problem, right? My accuracy is what? 1070? Okay, so if I pop on Ominous, double pen Ominous, right? And I have that swap. But now let's say I get Deborekas. Now look at my AP. It's much higher. And my accuracy is 1052. In this context, you can kind of see why I'm saying that the Lunar Turo isn't as good as people might think. Dawn is pretty okay because you can still hit brackets. So like, let's say you're running Kudum. Dawn Earring sort of does the same thing compared to Distortion or compared to the the Devereka. However, it's it's not that bad. Like, let's say I do this. Like, this, this is not that bad. Like, this you can kind of work with, right? But obviously, you're going to want to just go like this for the most part. 307, 305. You're missing, you're getting two AP bracket difference here. I would say this is more of like a class specific thing. It depends on your class. But when you're hitting this, you're going to be considering in your swaps because a lot of the time when you're this geared, you're probably not going to be running a Kuda maneuver. Your aim is going to be to out gear people and really like force that. So, um,. That's really the deal. Your 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 pre intro to hard cap pretty much, guys, is you're gonna be, you're gonna be rocking this pretty much. You're hitting like right about here, and then you're you're, hit, you're sitting on one pandisto, and then you got one tet, and then from here, what you're gonna do is you can start getting the Debaraka grind out of the way, or you can do something a little bit smarter. Um, a lot of tets these days they sit on the market like tet tet Labresca, fallen god and dawn. You could enhance the tet yourself, or you could make the difference and sell your try and buy the tet. People are actually at the higher end gear levels that are making tests and selling them, believe it or not. So what you could do from this point on and you're and you're like getting into hard cap, you buy the tet, get some extra defensive stats, and then go for the Deborah. And then really your final thing is to start looking at these belt swaps right here that give you that like that, that give you the active skill. Um, you guys, are, you guys are gonna want to work on that too. But that's pretty much where you're all headed, plus all the swaps added in. And obviously, like I said, whether you're gonna build Lunar Turos or Dawn Earrings, look at your class and see if you really need it or if it's really even worth it. But that's all I can offer for today's guide, guys. If you enjoyed the guide, guess what? The next guide I'm dropping is gonna be a general PvP guide for 2023. That's gonna be pretty important. And after that, we're just uploading hella content. So, and if y'all know me, I'm one of the few people who's gonna make this community spicy as always. So, hit that sub button, comment down below, like the video, and if you guys want any other guides, let me know.